Good morning, Gracetown. I hope you are having an amazing Christmas weekend, celebrating, resting, eating, and opening up gifts, and just most importantly, being with friends and family whom you love and share your life with. I'm so glad you've came into this service today in a home. I'm in John and Angel Ando's home here in Columbus recording this special message. So I want to talk to you about something today that I feel is very important as we approach 2016. The title of this message is really simple. Three things to remember and three things to do in 2016. My text is coming from Colossians chapter 1, verse 28 and 29, and it says this from the New Living Translation. So we tell others about Christ, warning and teaching everyone with all wisdom that God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and I struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. I want to remind us of some important things that we need to know first and foremost as a Christian, as a Christ follower, and then as a member of Gracetown Church. Number one, we are called to help people find Jesus. Bottom line, that's why the church exists. John 19, 17 and 25 says this, finally they turned again to the blind man and they said, what do you have to say about him? And he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. They got this blind man to Jesus and his life was transformed. My second verse is 1 Corinthians 9, 22 in the Living Bible. And it says, yes, whatever a person is like, I try to find common ground with him so he will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save him. You know, the church exists to reach people. Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The world is our influence. Wherever we work, wherever we live, wherever our neighbors are, wherever we are in the marketplace at, we are to reach that world. The church, I believe, is the primary place where people actually come to faith in Christ and begin to live as Christians. I believe that lost people matter to God and therefore lost people matter to Gracetown. That's why we've constructed our services on Sunday morning to reach people. It's an evangelistic endeavor and we want to present and continue to present the gospel. That's why every Sunday people are making fresh starts and commitments to Christ and receiving salvation. I am so excited to tell you that right now we've seen 60 fresh starts and salvations in 2015 at Gracetown Church, and we've seen 24 water baptisms all in 2015. That to me is amazing, and it's why we exist. I know our motto and our mission and vision for Gracetown is to be a place that inspires hope, builds faith and leads people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 23, he said, go out into the country and urge anyone you can find to come in so that my house will be full. Can I encourage you in 2016 to be a bringer, to bring somebody with you on Sunday mornings at Gracetown Church? Who can you bring? Write some names down. Write five names down on your, in your journal or on a sheet of paper that you could invite to church in 2016. Maybe their families, maybe their neighbors, maybe their friends, maybe their coworkers. But I would encourage you, we exist to help people find Jesus and we can never stop doing that. Number two, we want to help people find relationships. Relationships are so important. Do you realize that life is meant to be shared? We're not called to do life alone. We need each other. Um, you don't know very many happy hermits, but I want to encourage you. We, got, we have to help people find relationships. James 5.16 says it like this. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can be healed. And the prayer of a righteous man is powerful 
and effective. When you're in relationships with people and you have good friendships and you love one another and you trust one another and you care one for one another, you can confess things to them and they can pray for you and not gossip about you, but pray for you. And then your prayers, the Bible says, are powerful. Romans chapter 12, verse 5 said it like this. Since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other and each of us needs all the others. Bottom line, we need each other. We need the people in our life. And I want to encourage you to take a step forward in building relationships, maybe mending some broken relationships, maybe healing some strained relationships. But this can be done in the context of any kind of setting. But at Gracetown, we really encourage you to get together in life groups. And I want to encourage you in 2016, the third week in January, we're going to be starting our new semester in life groups. We're going to be doing a church-wide um, campaign that we're all going to be doing the same topic and the same DVD study, and it's going to be an awesome time. So I want to encourage you to sign up for that and be a part of a life group. And then I also encourage you to go out to lunch and be, go out to dinner and grab a cup of coffee with somebody and start building relationships. Number three, the other three things we need to, re the other third thing we need to remember is this. We help people grow spiritually. We're not a country club. We're not just to meet socially, but we're to help people grow spiritually. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13 says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come in the unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. God has given us gifts to the church, the pastor, the teacher, the prophet, the apostle, and the evangelist to build up the church. Gracetown is called to build you up spiritually. Matter of fact, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. At Gracetown, we believe that God's Word is the primary catalyst for transformation and spiritual growth. We believe that you will never grow up as a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ on a diet of just spiritual Twinkies. You and I need the Scripture. That's why Sunday our worship experience where you are taught the Word of God is so important. Don't miss. Make Sunday mornings a priority in your life. The writer in Hebrew said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves as you see the day approach. So I believe that the scriptures, the Word of God was given to us to increase, not just increase our knowledge, but to change and transform our lives. That's how powerful God's Word is. You know, I believe that knowing God's Word is the path to actually knowing God. And we will never be more spiritual than we are scriptural. So we teach the Bible. Everything I talk about on Sunday mornings comes directly from the Word of God. I'm excited because this year at Gracetown, we launched our Fresh Start with God class on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. and at 9 a.m., two, two classes, and we talked about Fresh Start with God. Our teacher was uh, Steve Light, who is a uh, teacher of God's Word and does excellent, but I'm super excited about what we're going to start in January to help facilitate spiritual growth. He will be teaching on Sunday mornings beginning the first Sunday in January. That would be called the Celebration of Discipline, based on Richard Foster's um, famous awesome book. And so we encourage you to sign up, either come to the 8 a.m. class or the 9 a.m. class, but we're going to help you grow spiritually. So I want to tell you, we exist to do that. We want to help you learn the Word of God. So those are three things that I really want you to remember. Now I want to tell you that there are three things that we need to do in 2016. The first one is this, pray. 
We need to be people who pray and seek God. Matthew 9, 37 and 38 says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. We're, there's a great need in the body of Christ for people to make a difference. Jesus said the answer to that is to pray and ask him to move on people. Prayer must be a priority. Matter of fact, Ephesians chapter 1, 17 and 18 said it like this. I keep asking God uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope that he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I believe that prayer is probably the highest order of God's business. It links powerless human beings to a creative force of God's sovereign power. Things change. People change when people pray. Don't ever neglect that. I love what Max Lucado said. When we work, or we work, but when we pray, God works. Something happens in the atmosphere. Something happens internally when you begin to pray. That is something that we should never neglect. If we're too busy to pray, we give our spiritual life a funeral. I believe that prayer is not an a option. It's a necessity. So I want to encourage you in 2016, encourage you, admonish you, and challenge you. Take the first 10 to 15 minutes of your day and pray. Do a devotional. Read a devotional. I have many different devotions, devotionals that I gleam from, um, books of prayer that I will read and it'll help me focus on scripture and actually give me the words to say in my prayers. Books like The Common Prayer and books like uh, uh, Prayers That Availeth Much and, and, and devotionals. I want to encourage you, take the first 10 to 15 minutes of your day and discipline yourself to pray and give your devotion to God. I'm also calling for a church-wide prayer and fasting for seven days. Yep, that's right. I'm calling us to prayer and fasting for seven days, starting January 11th all the way to January 18th. We're going to pray and we're going to fast. And I'm encourage you, it, do, it doesn't just have to be food. I would encourage you to fast social media, maybe television, maybe movies. Just do something that will turn your heart to be Godward and to sacrifice for God to grow stronger in your life. So we're going to spend those seven days beginning January 11th in seeking God and sacrificing for God. Remember this, one prayer can change anything and one prayer can change everything. When you pray, you move the heart of God. So Gracetown, let's be a people that prays. Let's be a church that prays. Number two, serve. I want to encourage you that there's no better way to make a difference in somebody's life is to take the time to volunteer, to take the time and serve. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, well, we are God's workmanship, which means we are His poem, poetry, work of art, or masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. And here's the only reason why. To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So here's the big idea in 2016. I believe many of you have sat comfortably on the chairs at Gracetown Church, and you haven't stepped up to the plate to make a difference in somebody's life and to volunteer and to serve. The big idea is this. In the world, greatness is determined by how many people serve you. But in God's kingdom, greatness is determined by how many people you serve. Galatians chapter 6 verse 4 says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work that you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Let me tell you a little story here. There's a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. 
There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did. Somebody got angry with that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought about anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody would not do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. That's very true. Will you make serving a part of your year in 2016 as a committed follower of Christ and member of Gracetown Church? I, we admire Pastor Brian Houston and the Hillsong fan, Church family. And Brian Houston made this statement. He said, Hillsong Church is not built on the gifts and the talents of a few, but on the sacrifice of many. It's not the responsibility of a few people on Sunday morning to serve. It's the, it should be the sacrifice of many at Gracetown Church to build Gracetown Church. So I want to encourage you, use your gifts, your talents, your abilities to serve and be a part of the dream team of Gracetown Church. Let us know. Jump on the website. Send us an email. Jeannie Thorne is our volunteer coordinator and will help place you and get you to be a part of the dream team and serve where you can grow and make a difference in somebody's life. So amen. Number three in our last point today is simply this. Give. Make giving a part of your life. Luke 18, 29 and 30 says, I guarantee this. Anyone who gives up anything for the kingdom of God will certainly receive many times more in this life and will receive eternal life in the next world to come. Mark chapter 8, 35 says, if you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. I want to tell you that I believe the key to a Godward life is really to have a heart of generosity. Proverbs eleven twenty four 24 gives the reason for this and the result. So not just a reason, but a result. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. And one withholds unduly but comes to poverty. But a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will be refreshed himself. Listen, generosity and giving doesn't start when you won the lottery. Doesn't start when you're wealthy. Doesn't start when you have a lot. Generosity starts when you have little. Your giving and your generosity should be directly tied, listen, to what God allows to come into your life. It's not about keeping up with the Joneses. It's not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. So I want to encourage you to do three things uh, as a giver and being a part of the body of Christ and a member of Gracetown Church. One, be a tither. What does that mean? God calls us in the scripture to return, not even give, but to return 10% of what he allows to come into our lives back to him. I don't give my tithe. I return my tithe to him. I want to challenge you. If you're not a tither, do it. You know what? We'll even step out and say, we'll give you a 90 day money back guarantee. I bet you never heard that before. If you don't see results and you don't see God blessing you and keeping your family and just and just protecting you and doing great things. So I want to challenge you. Be a tither. Number two, give offerings. We take offerings and we receive tithe at Gracetown Church. And our offerings, we will take up for missions and benevolence and certain things that happen. You know, an offering is simply whatever is in your heart, whatever you decide to do. Give offering. And then number three, you know, it is our goal not to remain a portable church. We have been blessed since September 18th, 2011 to have church in, in two schools, Westerville Central High School and now the New Albany Middle School. But we are believing God for a permanent location. But that takes finances. That takes people giving over and above their tithe and their offering. And so we have a savings account at Gracetown that when you direct on your, in your giving that you would like this to go to building fund, it's going to go directly to our future building whether that is we build one or we buy one or we lease a permanent facility, that will go towards that. And so I want number three, I would encourage you to give to the future of Gracetown Church.
You know, God calls us and you and I to a service. I believe that's far beyond anything that we could imagine. You and I were put on this earth to make a difference. And I want to encourage even on this Sunday, we didn't gather as a church family, but we still have bills. We still have obligations. We still have things that we are required to do. And I want to encourage you today to take the moment. If this message has been an encouragement to you, if Gracetown has been a blessing to you, and you love what God is doing at Gracetown, making a difference in people's lives, inspiring and building their hope, you know, it's December 27th. You still have time to give today and for it to be credited to your 2015 charitable giving on your taxes. So I want to encourage you, go to gracetownchurch.com slash give. You'll see that on the bottom of your screen. And uh, just click that link, go there, and you can give online and you can make a difference. You can be faithful and you can contribute to what God is doing through Gracetown because Gracetown has an amazing future. God's got great plans. We're moving forward. And I believe 2016 is going to be better than 2015. We're going to see God bless this church like never before. Will you be a part of it? So listen, on behalf of our family and the team at Gracetown, we hope you have an amazing, happy new year. We'll see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. at Gracetown Church. And go Bucks, beat the Irish. <laughs>